During a ride on the astrophotography learning curve, at one point you'll encounter your worst enemy, the calibration frames. Okay, I'm over exaggerating, but to be honest, it did not start off on the right foot between me and the calibration frames and I highly expect I'm not the only one out there with this backstory. Even though I was able to shine a little light on this topic for myself in the meantime, and also for you in the last video, the actual process still can be annoying. Especially if you find yourself in the following situation. The sky suddenly cleared up, but it's an ordinary weekday and you have to work the day after. Typically, you're checking how long your target can be seen, bring it back out and how much signal could be obtained in total. So naturally, you're already calculating at what time you can finally go to bed and how much sleep there will be left. And that hits you. You remember that it's not over after that and you need to take dark, bias and flat frames as well. Big oof. For the flat frames I can't help you with this video, but for the first two types, darks and bias, we'll have a look at a way of making the actual astronomy sessions a little easier on you. The magic word here is databank, or more precisely, a calibration frame databank. This means you can shrink the time down from each night taking additional frames to almost only taking light and flat frames. In terms of dark frames, I'm talking big time. Depending on the length of your subs, this could mean a few hours if you want to take 50 dark frames, for example. Hey guys, Chris here and you're watching Chris's Observable Universe. By the way, did you notice my new background? Well, I redecorated a bit and got myself a little stuff for mounting my <laughs> musical instruments, my guitars and my bass, so that'll be in the background for now on. Quite happy how it looks. <clears throat> okay, back on track, back on track. To begin, little caveat or disclaimer. The dark data bank may not be as easy for you to generate if you're not using a dedicated astronomy cam, but instead utilize a DSLR. But during my research, I've also seen people using their refrigerators or uh, deep freezers to control the chip temperature. So depending on how far you want to go, there are at least uh, these options out there. <laughs> but as I've already spoiled, we'll be making a dark and bias data bank. But I just want to further highlight the fact that a flat frame data bank cannot be obtained. As the flat frame always corrects your optical path of that exact session. And similar to a deck of cards, your optical path will never be the exact same as the one from a previous session. But before we switch over to the Ecos view, I want to give you a quick insight on the hardware setup. I'm creating a dark and bias databank for my ASI 183MC color camera. So of course, I need to set up the camera by providing 12 volts power and an USB 3 connection to the Pi. I put on the lid onto the chip and additionally put it slightly into the casing. Leave enough space for the airflow though, the Peltier cooler might be quite warm if the airflow is blocked. I put the extra hull on there just to have it a little bit extra dark, especially if I'm in the office and I'm switching on the lights anyway, so that is the reason for that. But now let's get back to the PC. Just on a quick explanation, for the bias frames it's uh, actually quite the same hardware setup, you need to have your lid on and uh, the cooling is not as important for this one. So. Um, hardware setup pretty similar to the dark frame setup. So now uh, here on the PC we are connected via the VNC client and we want to go into case dust. And what you will do, you are in your camera tab, you um, of course you need to enable the cooling to the defined temperature. So if we want to start by minus 10 degrees Celsius, this was my lowest temperature so far. And we set here the number. And basically what we want to do is we want to toggle through the different um, exposure times starting off for example by 30 seconds. So we'll just show you this for, for one setup and then we want to go with a um, gain setting. So depending on what your camera is capable of you, you'll take a gain setting from there um, and then we want to enter 50 exposures, that's what I chose because for the longer exposure times this can already take quite some time um, and then you can 
well, select your path once again, if, if that's uh, not set as your usual path. And yeah, also when you use a DSLR, you can then set the ISO here. Then we'll add that. And well, basically we just wanna have like a long to-do list for this program here. So um, once we're done, we make sure that it's nicely dark on the chip. The temperature um, is correct. And yeah, then you can just hit go and it will, will do. So um, over here, I have like a little example screenshot from my session. But I think there is a better one. Let me quickly, in this screenshot, you can see uh, the first frame. So for example, here I um, started with 30 seconds exposure, dark binning like uh, that. And uh, apparently here the gain is not set. So I think I also tried around a bit. Um, here you can see this is a I want a uh, really used, um, so gain 225 for example, uh, for one setting and 60 seconds. And then you can think of like a logical distribution. You can think of the exposure times usually take, for example, um, I can show you my data bank real quick um, in a few seconds, but um, you can toggle through the different gain options and you can toggle through the different exposure times. And like as the biggest for loop <laughs> in this logical um, process, you will go through the temperatures. Uh, at least that's what I would recommend because if you're having like a, a cooled camera, then normally you would always go to like your preferred temperature anyway. That's, that's what I do. I try to split it up to like winter time temperature and summertime temperature because in the summer, the Delta gets a bit higher of course. If, if Especially if you're living like close to a desert or something, a desert area, then <laughs> I don't think you will reach minus 10 uh, degrees Celsius anyway. So maybe you'll take a couple of temperatures for that and toggle through the gain and the exposure times. Now, how that looks in the end, I can show you as well. Here it is. So um, it's on my NAS drive. So I have like a folder for calibration frames. Then I sorted it. You can do it in a similar way, but that's just how I prefer it. And uh, I, I'll find it <laughs> um, for the bias data bank. Um, you just need to toggle through the gain, as I said. So for example, just uh, some, some example values, gain 90, 135 and so on. And if I were to click in this folder, then I have my 50 subs for this um, special gain setting. And in the end, um, I have like the master offset at that gain setting. So I could just click that and it takes a little time to load. And that's the file, not, not much uh, action going on because it's just like a really short exposure. Um, and it's also not stretched or something. So it's like um, the default TIFF. Um, but yeah, bias is not so uh, <laughs> surprising, just again. But now for the dark data bank, this could be a bit more interesting, I think. Um, for now, I have just these two temperatures, so like a negative 10 degrees Celsius and zero degrees. Maybe I'll add a 10 degree, but well, uh, maybe I'll do that in summer when I actually um, need different temperatures. Um, so for example, if we go into the negative 10, I've started with those three different gain settings uh, in my ZW ASI 1A3, it goes up to 415, if I'm not mistaken. So I've taken like different um, sections. Maybe I'll make the highest gain setting. Uh, I also include that in an upcoming dark session. And also you can simply amend any other um, uh, steps in between if you happen to, to take like a different like if you were uh, to find that 300 in the game setting is like a good um, setting for capturing some, some lights of a certain object, then why not include it afterwards again? But basically how this um, structure um, looks, it's like if I go into this, then you see uh, I have four different exposure times. And um, if I were to click on the 30 seconds, then I'll see um, all the different subs at that temperature, at that gain setting and at that exposure time. 
Now, um, I would also recommend, as you see here, when you are entering um, the file path in your Astroberry um, save uh, folder here, I, um, I would recommend here in the prefix uh, to give it a, also like a logical name because in the end you'll end up with a big folder and if that all is just separated by time then you will maybe have more trouble than if you would just rename it every time. Back here, and now that we've um, separated it in this logical structure, um, you, you end up with a, like a lot of um, files in the end. So you see every TIFF has like 40 megabytes of um, storage here. And well, I got like a NAS here, but maybe you don't have that much storage. So in the end, you want to end up like with a master dark or a master bice um, frame. That is just like one single um, file and you just need this in your final stacking procedure. Well, I'm also not 100% finished with my <laughs> data bank, but um, the next step would be to um, further stack all your different subs from the dark files. So as I did here, um, all those 50 uh, single dark files have been stacked to a master dark and that's what you want to do. And well, I can show you how I did that for like um, the dark frames. And basically I'm using Deep Sky Stacker and so let's uh, start from scratch. Okay. And um, well, we're dealing here with dark frames, so I'm clicking on dark frames on the top left. And let's do a little example. So we wanna do 30 seconds, for example, and gain 135. Then I will mark all 50 dark files and hit open. It will take like a little time. And now we can see that all our darks are loaded here. And well, now we just should be able to click stack pictures, but it does not work if you don't um, have a light frame. I can show you, it. yeah, so please give me a light frame. So then you can just select any light frame you have at, uh, you have at hand or even a dark frame, it doesn't matter because it will be used as a light frame in the stacking procedure anyway. So um, it will first stack all your dark frames and then stack the light frame, but it's just a single one. So it will subtract the dark frames, but you're not interested in the result anyway. You just want the stacking um, results from the dark frames. So uh, I just added one single light frame and we hit um, uh, stack the checked um, pictures here. And there's a red button and leave that as it is. And then it will add up all the 50 dark frames for my example. And when we're finished, it will end up with a dark master dark tiff, which ends up in the folder structure of the subs. So for me, it would be in the gain 135, 30 seconds. And you see here, it's not there yet because it's stacking. But once I'm finished, which unfortunately takes a little time um, because it's like a big data amount and it doesn't want to open up again, here it is. So we're um, loading through here, but well, um, it's stacking the dark frames. And once I'm finished, I will obtain the master dark frame. And now I have it in my dark frame data bank. So I think it's quite a good um, solution if you have like a cooled AstroCam and you can compress all the hard work <laughs> of taking dark frames into like one, two, three days, uh, depending on how much um, different uh, settings you want to have at the end. And well, but then um, you're not um, spending any additional time now during your actual capture, capturing process at the end. So I think that's quite a neat thing to, to at least think of. And even if you do not use a astro cooled AstroCam, you can still use that approach for building yourself a BIOS frame data bank. So of course it takes time and it also takes storage space. That's something you need to keep in mind. I don't know if you wanna, if you, usually uh, when I um, did my pictures and then I took the dark frames for these exact um, circumstances, I usually threw them away after a certain time. So I already had some free space left 
but if you have like a um, dedicated um, storage like an external um, hard drive or something um, you can simply put all the stuff on there and um, even if you if you think you won't be using the subs anymore um, because if you have like the master files you, technically you don't need them anymore so um, you could simply um, throw all the subs away and end up with only 40 megabyte files or well depending on how uh, big your your uh, image will be at the end but let's say 40 megabytes but then you'll just end up with 40 megabytes per setting so um, let's just well it should in the end even if you take like a lot of um, various steps you can end up I think still below one gigabyte or something so it's actually not that bad um, so I just let it do a quick calculation. Um, so my current folder structure needs up to 24 <laughs> gigabytes, but as I said, I, I'm storing the subs um, still. So maybe I want to have even further subs and stack them again. But if you don't intend on doing that, um, you can throw them away and maybe end up with just one gigabyte. And I think that should be uh, easily storable in the end. Yeah, as I said, um, that's a neat little trick, so to speak, or like uh, you, you're doing the work before it actually should occur and um, could be a time saver. I think that there are different opinions on when you should be taking them again uh, in terms of the hardware changes a little bit, like um, the, the heat generation pattern or something like that. But as I said, as we're cooling the camera to a dedicated temperature I think it should be like you can can like have it for for a single year at least or something like that and then yeah spend a few days on that and don't have to worry about for the for the next year okay. so that was like uh, how I built myself the dark and vice calibration frame data bank hope you could gain some some interesting aspects from there and if you have any question just drop it below in the comments. I'm happy to, to answer them and uh, yeah, thank you for watching. My name is Chris, you've been watching Chris's Observable Universe. If you enjoyed it, just leave a like and wishing you clear skies. Chris out!